we have a fill-in. Uh, Marshall Dean's going to do a presentation on 811, which is uh, near and dear to any utility. We hate having facilities hit, so always call 811 before you dig anywhere. So, well, Marshall Dean come up and present this. And I, I apologize, I don't have much of an introduction. It's kind of a quick fill-in. I'm sure he'll introduce himself. Yeah, uh, Jeff Bartlett was supposed to do this, and he couldn't get here for due to the weather. So um, I was already coming, so he just asked me to get the board. for him. Um, what I'm doing here. Um, I'll do the best I can with what he's put in the presentation, and then the GIS part, I'll be filling with that, because I'll do most of that work anyway. I've been with North Carolina 811 for 22 years, so I should be able to do it, I hope. Um, You've seen the utility markings, or you do utility markings, or you know what they are. Um, these are just examples of them where you may see them. Uh, this is uh, the actual list of what each color means. I brought color code cards and a brochure. If you'd like one after the meeting, you can see many of them have them here. There's a video uh, that they put in here. I'm not sure it's going to play or not. Um, and if you get, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it or not, but um, we'll see when we get to it. Uh, North Carolina 811 was established in 1978. Uh, our mission is to act in advance notification service for excavators before excavation occurs. Uh, but we don't locate the utilities. A lot of people are under misconception that we do the markings. And it's actually the, the contractors that the utilities hire or the utilities do it themselves. We are a not for profit. Uh, we are funded by the utilities themselves. They pay uh, fees for the locate requests that we send them. And it's governed by a board of directors made up of representatives of the various utilities. There's different um, sets of utilities that there's a representative of each type in different classes. Uh, we are not part of the state of North Carolina. We are a, just a non, not for profit corporation. Uh, we are the only such service in the state of North Carolina, and the new law that passed in October of last year uh, set up a one call system. We are open 24 7, 365, whenever closed. We only take emergency tickets from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. the next day, Monday through Friday. And, uh, take regular tickets from 7 to 7, and we take emergency tickets every holiday and weekends after that. Um, I'm not sure why I put that in there again, but uh, we just, we do not locate, we just, we're like the answering service, kind of, sort of. We um, take the call, disseminate it to the utilities, and they locate the lines. Getting ready to do some digging in your yard? Wait! You need to call North Carolina 811 first. Why? There are buried cables, lines, and pipes under the ground that supply you and your neighborhood with important services, like internet, power, water, and more. And I don't know about you, but until they come up with x-ray goggles, it's a little hard to know exactly where those lines are buried. Have no fear. 811 is here. With a quick and easy call to North Carolina 811, your lines can be marked in just a couple of days, and then you can get started with your digging project. But how does all this work, you ask? Let's take a look at what I like to call the safe digging process. Step one, make sure you have all your information ready before you call North Carolina 811, like your address, where you'll be digging, what the digging is for and how long it will take. Step two, call 811 and speak with a North Carolina 811 customer service representative. They will ask you a few questions about your project so they can figure out which utilities to contact for you. 
At the end of the call, they will give you a locate number. You can use that number later to check on the status of your locate and to see who has and hasn't marked your lines. You can also use it to update your locate if the digging will take a little longer than you expected. Step 3. Wait the required time. North Carolina law requires that you wait three full working days before you begin digging. While you wait, be sure to mark the area that you are planning to dig in with white paint or flags so that the utility locators know exactly where you plan on digging. Step 4. Once all the lines are marked with either stakes, flags, or paint, remember to respect the marks. Each utility will mark in their designated colors. Yellow is for gas, red is for power, blue is water, green is sewer, and orange is for communication lines. Step five, and this is by far the most important step, dig with care. Always be aware of the tolerance zone. That's 24 inches on either side of the marked utility. And if you must dig within the tolerance zone, use extreme caution. Will they mark all my underground lines? Good question. Some lines like water and sewer that run from the meter to your house are called private lines. These lines won't get marked by utilities contacted by North Carolina 811. You will need to call a private line locator to have those lines marked for you. Nice thing, North Carolina 811 has a listing of private line locators right on their website. This all seems like an awful lot to remember. Not to worry. North Carolina 811 has two great resources just filled with information for you. You can either go to their website at nc811.org or you can download their NC811 app right to your phone or tablet. If you are a contractor and call in lots of locates, North Carolina 811 has a remote ticket entry program you can use. This way you can create your own tickets online and avoid calling 811 all the time. On NC811's website and app, you will find a few helpful programs that can simplify the whole process for you. Use Update Light to update a ticket if your digging will last longer than you thought. Positive Response will tell you who has marked your lines and who hasn't. A single address ticket can be used to put in a locate for a single location. So don't forget to make the call. Call 811 every time you plan on digging. It's not just the smart thing to do, it's also the law in North Carolina. So happy digging, everybody. And these are some statistics that Jeff put in here for last year's um, tickets and transmissions. Uh, we took over a uh, million tickets, and that was an increase in the previous year. Uh, the transmissions, um, we take so many tickets, but we notify multiple utilities on each ticket. Uh, it could be one to 30 or 40, depending on where the locate is being done. That's why there's more transmissions. And here's the GIS part. We get the data. Uh, it's obtained by the member service department. That's the department I work in. Uh, we help any the members with anything they need, any kind of reports, any kind of anything they want to know how to do. Uh, we set up their databases of how they get notified in the system, and we we train them on the various programs they need uh, to do that. Uh, the GIS data is used by the customer service representatives when they take a locate request. They go into the map and they draw a polygon on the map where the excavation site is going to be based on what the excavator tells them on the phone. Uh, it's used by contractors when they use to do the remote ticket entry. They go in there and draw their own polygons. It's used by the uh, locators, um, well, I'm, I'm sorry, used by the utilities. They also go in and draw polygons on the map or grids depending on what kind of database they have on our map. And the uh, locators uh, use the map because we have a ticket management system that they can go in and get the tickets that way and then they can pull up a map 
and see where the actual worker was put in at our center. Or we can send them, if they don't use the TMS program, we send them a link in the email that they can pull up on an online map. We currently use Arc Map 10.3 to um, massage the data. We have to uh, make adjustments to the attributes so that it works in our map, so that the map can read the tables. We originally started out with Tiger data like everybody back in the 80s. Um, of course, we, we moved to a more geospatially accurate data. Uh, it took a couple of years to switch that over because the, um, the streets weren't in the same place, obviously, and the utilities had drawn their facilities and their database, and they may have shifted several hundred feet or even farther, so they had to go in and redo all of their different facilities before we could switch them all over. And at that time, geocoding was done by address block range. Um, if you put in 100 Main Street, the 100 block would light up on the map. We would also use landmark points to help assist if we couldn't really determine where it was or make sure we were in the right place. And we also have orthos. Um, we use the NAEP um, orthos from the USDA. Now, we also use parcels and address points. Uh, this provides for more accurate uh, pinpointing of the location, whereas an address range can, along the block can be you know, telling how long. Uh, the parcel, if it's at a particular address, then we can just narrow it down to just that property. We're still in the process of switching over to all the parcels. Um, we have approximately 55 to 60 counties switched over. Uh, we're looking forward to the um, and see one map getting all of the parcel data uh, converted into the same format so we can get that. It uh, will speed up our process. Uh, we get the data. We used to get, we get it from paper maps. Uh, some of the utilities send us um, uh, PDFs or paper maps of their facilities that have new streets where they're going to put them in. We use NC1 map data. And we use even Bing and Google to verify information. Sometimes we have a discrepancy. We get it from different counties. Uh, some of you are from different county tax departments or anything. You've probably heard from some, one of us. This is our quick map. <coughs> a screenshot of quick map. Uh, this is a basic uh, mapping program. We also have the orthos. Uh, we can turn on the streets as well so we can tell where we are with the ortho. We don't use that um, unless we need to verify a particular area. We're looking for a certain landmark and it's difficult because it, the caller doesn't have enough information uh, to help us pinpoint the address. And how the utilities are notified. The utilities would create their database. Uh, the original one we used with the uh, said the old Tiger data, <coughs> it was a grid system. Um, they would go in and mark their grids on the map, then they would mail it back as a paper map, and we would input it in the system. Uh, then we got to develop the online version, and the, the facilities may be, it may blanket an area, it may be just one grid here or there, it just depends on where the facilities lie. Then, about 10 years ago, we developed the Polygon, database, which is more accurate because it can define the area better. Uh, the utilities can draw their own polygons or they can submit a shape file of the polygons and they'll create a buffer around it or they can just send the buffer file to either one. As again, it may blanket an area, it may be a small area, it may be a larger area, just depending on where their facilities are and how big their buffer is. The way they get notified, um, we would, this, this represents a dig site polygon uh, that a uh, we would have put on a map, say this block range, and as you can tell it's in yellow in the middle there. We put a 250 foot buffer around the block to compensate for errors in the mapping or um, errors in the information that the caller gives. Just we would rather make sure that we no over notify the utilities a little bit than to not notify them when something get cut or something get hurt. And then we also create the grids over top of the 
polygon because some members still haven't switched over from the old grid system to the new grid to the polygons. So we still have to have both databases in there in order to notify the different types that they may have. Now as we're using the polygons for the parcels, that's that red uh, square there represents a parcel. And if someone is digging a particular dish, you see it's half the size of the original locator that we would have done, we can narrow down the utilities better and not notify as many people unnecessarily. Then when the dig site polygon intersects the utility polygon, the utility is notified. If the <coughs> grids overlap the grids, then they're notified. If it doesn't, then they're not notified. And if, as long as it's at a property, we can do the parcel, but we'll still do the um, block range if it's just along a street, because someone may be digging from one point to another, even cross country. And that's about it. Um, if you'd like to contact us, um, there's our information there. Jeff, Jeff is a education liaison. He's always traveling around the state, giving presentations at UCCs, which is utility coordinating committees, and helps the excavators and the utilities work together. There's a calendar at ncucc.org. And if you'd like to see questions, I'll be there next. How big are your blocks? How big are your blocks? However big, however big the block is, block range. If it's out in the rural area, it could be a, a mile. Excavator and the utility, but we can provide recordings of the telephone call or copies of the locate request. We keep that for four years because we're not out there. We don't know what happened. We're just, we're just the middleman. Think someone else had a question? Yes. I think I heard you say at the beginning that your nine one A one is uh, funded by utilities. Yes. Uh, with Google planning to. Uh, Yes, there are. We're already discussing with them sitting in the database.